Um, we're very good afternoon to all of you. I'm going to have to I apologize, but I moved on my paper. So uh, all of you have shown me out today. Um, for the next time, I'll learn what he has in no as the next time I paper, we'll, hey, we first time, I'm more than much. Um, I'm just an honor to be here this afternoon. A special thank you to the Semangana Seven Arts uh, team, Usbu and Usine, for inviting me to speak today. Well, you know, uh, I had this amazing, bright idea um, you know, when I was planning my speech and uh, coming up with the idea of what you want to do. And I thought I'm going to come onto stage and then break into song. Yes, we shall you piano, girls from the world, yeah, you know, that type of a thing. But um, I'm, because I'm to speak on women uh, issues and women empowerment and women in business and society at large. Uh, however, after some high level discussions uh, with my girlfriends over some wine, because that's what we do. Uh, an executive decision was made in Florence. Uh, you shall not engage in activities which shall embarrass the collective, the collective being my girlfriends. So uh, apparently I can't sing, uh, but that hasn't uh, been tested nor has it been verified. Uh, so uh, I but graciously, nonetheless, decided Uti will keep all the singing and dancing to Usis Musi. Like being a full pressurizer, you have to So. I'm very excited to be here and I appreciate all of you being here today. So yes, I've been asked to speak on uh, two topics, uh, one which is quite close to my heart, um, a topic I've written many articles on, uh, which is uh, women, uh, women's role in society and uh, in business, and the obstacles and challenges that, that we face as women. Secondly, my own career path and uh, how I've been maneuvering in this uh, media industry and what I've learned, and it is of course a difficult industry, but I think in general all of us are in difficult uh, industries. So when I speak about media, I'm not just speaking about uh, my space, but uh, I think all spaces at large, which in any case we will find ourselves in difficulty. Um, in all honesty, I would love nothing more than to stand up here and uh, you know paint a beautiful rosy picture of you know how easy it is to crack it uh, in business and in media and in society. Um, I would love to say that doors sort of swing open for us as, as women, but I'd be lying and it would be an absolute disservice uh, to you if I did that. In reality, there is a lot of unladylike knocking and banging and kicking and screaming and uh, we must often do that uh, to force these, these doors that are often closed for us uh, to open. And uh, you know you have to adopt that siabangena uh, attitude. No matter what, siabangena. It's an attitude we develop, not only uh, because we want to, but because you know in many instances we have to develop uh, that particular uh, attitude. So many times, you know, I've found myself in spaces where I'm you know frustrated uh, by the seemingly endless sort of kicking of doors. But I think the key is to not allow oneself uh, to be discouraged, nor to allow oneself to be let down by what some people perceive uh, to be failure. And to take it a step further, I actually challenge you to not allow people to tell you what failure is. And I've taken it to a completely different uh, level altogether. In fact, I've taken it to a place where I decided that the word failure, the word fail, they don't exist in my dictionary. They don't exist in my vocabulary. Whether that makes me delusional, that's fine. It's something that I've decided that makes me happy. I think once we make a decision to see ourselves as, as winners, even in times or in situations where perhaps we aren't winners, maybe we are being losers in that particular time, and that's the time when you take that failure and you say, actually, this is not a failure. It is actually that part where I might have done something wrong, but let me take that wrong thing and turn it into something good and make it work for me. And this time I carry the tool of experience as to why I failed in the first place. I mean, I think if you've never known what what setback is, or you've never experienced failing uh, in your quest to lead in your particular industry, I don't think you're, you can understand what being a winner is. You have to have at some point failed and fallen for you to understand what you now near a winner. So for me, the key is, I think, perseverance. Um, there's nothing I can place more emphasis on uh, than that. In fact, if I to think clearly about it, that must be the essence of the Siavangena. I had Usmue Usine on my show on, on 702, and 
we were struggling a lot to talk about, you know, to explain to the English listeners, what is Siamangela? We were trying to explain to you know, the English listeners, he didn't want to say Siamangela, I'm actually translating it from he in Siamangela. I'm confused. Okay, so I interview So I've been thinking about this thing. Okay, so I interview It's perseverance. It's it's you know when you've battled the burden, you know you you think you know what it doesn't matter either way. So long again, I land from a corner, and that's what the essence of Siabangela is. So there is no English for it, which is what makes us a unique team because we know how to put it on the way that it is. So Siabangela, we can say Yeah, hashtag Siabangela. So those barriers, unfortunately, are there for women, but uh, you know we can't afford to use barriers as an excuse. There are doors that will not open for you. But the key is to say, yes, who's over there, either which way. The truth of the matter is that we do live in this sort of, I would say it's a sexist world, you know, and it's a misogynistic type of society. The world doesn't often do favors uh, for us as women. And um, every battle up that ladder, but this is, you know, this is not a speech about, um, you know, gender injustice, but rather how we collapse uh, these barriers that we're often faced with, that women coming behind us don't have to battle the same obstacles. And I'm glad because I was having a very interesting conversation with the ladies I've just met here today, that you know, and it's even worse because we are in a situation as women where not just based on the skin color, but because of we are women as well. So everything in there as well. I think it's quite simple. There's, there's no easy road uh, given to us as women to pass through. Uh, it's a bumpy road. Uh, I'm a potholes, I'm a eaters. We must just navigate uh, through it. But as we navigate through, I think we should also not only think for ourselves, but to patch up that pothole that you came through so that once you pass it, we patch it. So that the next person doesn't have to patch the very same pothole. What was the use of your success if you would you are not patching up for the next person that's coming after you? I think it's easy for me to stand here and blame situations uh, that we women find ourselves in in business, um, blame outside things, you know, blaming men, uh, blame society. But I think sometimes our biggest obstacle um, in business is ourselves. We as women are actually stopping other women, ourselves, from getting any further. I mean, the possibilities are endless uh, when it comes to what women can do, and we know this. A dear male friend of mine who insisted I uh, give him a shout out to him anyway. <laughs> he said something that he didn't realize that it was quite profound, but it actually was. He said, technically women should be making bigger strides apart. Then they we should be come. making more leaps and bounds in the world of business because we have the ability to multitask, which is something that I'm sorry guys, I am multitasking at say again, and I'm sure you're aware of this. We can bear children while maintaining careers. We not only bring the bacon home, but we can cook it too. There's no reason why we shouldn't be, sorry, we shouldn't be on par with our male counterparts. So we not only have uh, that task, but the duty to climb these ladders and to be in business or in general in terms of the roles that we play in society, that the duty entails reaching the top of these ladders, not for our own egos, because your success actually means nothing if you're not going to pull somebody up along with you once you've succeeded. Your goal must be to reach that, uh, that pinnacle, that top, that peak, but to also then reach down and pull other women up with you. And that's the essence for me of what it is. There is no point to me for someone to be telling me how well they've done. I don't care. I don't care what car you're driving. I don't care where you live. My question to you will then be, what are you doing for other women that are coming behind you who are struggling? Are you helping those women? It makes no difference to me uh, what you've achieved if it's got nothing to do with anybody else. Um, I was conscious of making this, uh, not making this a sort of male bashing session, uh, prim primarily because I actually like the men. I like these men of ours. Um, though men aren't necessarily as smart as we are, there are certain things they get right, which I think that we should certainly be learning from. For example, uh, a man sees nothing wrong with passing on business to another man. Tina, for some reason, 
we see other women as obstacles, as problems. Um, why would I want to help you? Why would I want to assist you in what you're trying to achieve? Why would I want to let you become more successful? A man will see another man who's saying, you know what, actually, you're better equipped uh, for the job, even if it may not necessarily be in the best interest of me personally and me financially, but you know what, we so father in this thing so that you can succeed. Whereas women take a different and very horrible sort of approach when it comes to uh, you know, how we deal with other women in business. You see another woman and you go, oh, I neg, I neg. Now she's going to afford better things than I can. And I think it's a horrible way of us dealing with each other. I think once we realize, Ruti, when I help you, I'm helping myself at the end of the day, that's when you're going to start to succeed in business. When you know full well, Ruti, your contacts are going to be beneficial to the next woman, that's when you're actually supposed to be helping the other woman. So I think generally we can't be blaming um, our male counterparts all the time on the things that we're failing to do. We can't be failing, we can't be blaming society. Some of us even blame things like witchcraft. Um, so our struggles in the business world, I think it's time for us to kind of look into ourselves. And I think what Victor was talking about it, but he was talking about it on a point of, uh, as black people, Oguti, you know, we can blame other things, but when we're not helping each other, as our Banyama, there's no ways that we're going to succeed in anything. So that's my message, uh, primarily for today, Oguti. I think as women in business, the main goal is for us to help each other. I was also asked this afternoon to talk about uh, my own personal story and how I made uh, inroads in, in a cutthroat industry. And I can tell you that it is a cutthroat industry. I wasn't going to tell this, uh, this story, but uh, there's a channel that I work for. And, um, you know, I was, uh, I was told there was a lot of sort of fan mail coming in. And um, they said, you know what, Florence is a little bit too confident. She doesn't need to, uh, we're going to hide all her, her fan mail. And I learned at that point, people don't like confidence. People don't like you to be able to, to say, I'm good at what I do. But you know what, I don't need that film made in any case. I don't need that film made. You need to be assertive in yourself and to know yourself. But it's fine. Whether you're going to validate me or not, I'm going to make it in either which way. So the thing is, I didn't start in this, uh, in this career, as he mentioned. It wasn't the thing that I wanted to do. Um, I never wanted to get into media at all. It was never my goal, nor was it ever even my ambition. Um, it really was actually sort of my side gig, something I was doing uh, while on campus, while studying law. Uh, my goal and ambition was just to be a tough lawyer, a smart lawyer, a sharply dressed lawyer. I never ever planned to be in the media industry. Um, I've learned a lot about law from my uncle, who's on another job, some of you might know him. And we watched many episodes of Law and Order, and uh, I mean, I knew terms like quid pro quo by the time I was 10 years old. So I knew what I was going to do, and I had established from a very early age, I'm going to be this lawyer. I had my plans. I knew exactly when I was going to graduate. I knew when I was going to do my articles. I even knew where I was going to do my articles. I even knew when I was going to marry and have children. That's how bad it was, the way I had planned my life to a T. <laughs> And I think the lesson where I'm going with all of this is that I forgot one thing, that um, you don't dictate to life. Life dictates to you. Um, you, can just, you can choose in your head who's this what's going to happen, that's what's going to happen, but life happens to you. And sometimes we don't plan the things that we do, and you end up having to do them anyway. But I think, even though I wasn't able to be the attorney that I wanted to be, and it's not a dream that I've given up on, it's a dream that it's just deferred for the moment, I've learned that I must focus on what I'm doing in the moment and I must be great at what I'm doing in that time. Um, you can never be trusted to make milkshake, to get, you know, if you've got strawberries, you want to make a milkshake, a strawberry milkshake. If you've never learned the art of taking lemons that were thrown at you in life and making lemonade out of it, how do you think you're going to make that strawberry milkshake with the strawberries? You think that you always want the nice things in life, but sometimes it doesn't just work out like that. So I think as cliche as uh, the same goals, you know, life is indeed um, a journey and not um, a destination. And we must always enjoy that sort of scenic route um, that life takes us on. And I think Victor also did mention the fact that, you know, the universe always does sort of conspire to, 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 to take you where you need to go. 
And um, the, the point is to really just enjoy the trip. You can't enjoy uh, the destination without taking in all the lessons that the trip uh, gives you. And I think you know now I find myself in a position because of what I've done in the media industry where law firms are approaching me and saying, hey, when are you going to be ready to get into law? And there's the universe talking to me and saying, look, you didn't start where you wanted to, but we will take you there anyway. So that's the message uh, from me today. It's just, you know, I think those are two aspects where, you know, live life and, um, you know, understand that life sometimes throws you lemons and you just got to make those lemons work for you and make good out of uh, those lemons. And um, on the back of that, at the beginning of my speech, just that woman, I think we just need to come together and start to support each other in our businesses, in our ideas. We're all in different fields, but I know in the media space that I'm in, I might be able to help you, who's a fashion person. Someone might be able to help me. And I think we just need to learn, especially as black women, who do want let's leave it alone. Let's just start to develop and help each other so that we grow, because we're gonna end up being these bitter old women fighting about which white women are still successful. They are successful because they are Cezanne. And I think it's important that as black women, we need to start learning these lessons, that we need to be there and encourage each other and help each other, because there's nothing that's gonna happen if we don't do that. Thank you very much, and I do appreciate it.